1 through 11. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received from the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not just lied to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died, and great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out as well. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in, and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Thank you so much for the reading, Madison. I'm Michael Chesterman, one of the members here at Christ Church Liverpool. And before we get started, why don't you take a moment, grab a cup of coffee or tea, get your kids settled with their favorite toys, and maybe grab something to take some notes. I'm really excited to go through this passage with you, so just take this minute. All right, now hopefully we're all snuggled in nice and cozy. Um, and before I dive into this passage, let's pray. Lord, I ask that you will teach us about who we are and how we can live out of your spirit and not out of ourselves. Show us who you are and speak to us today. Amen. So hypocrisy in the church is nothing new and continues to be revealed in our society. There are even shows out today like The Righteous Gemstones, a story about a family looking good to get rich off running a megachurch. And to many, this may seem like a lighthearted series, but in all actuality reveals a lot about who we are and our nature, how we try so hard to curate our lives to be perceived one way when in actuality that is not who we are. We try to hide who we are while pretending to be somebody we don't even want to be. We only want to be perceived this way. It is so much easier nowadays on social media more than ever. This is something that we do all do to some degree or to another. We want to look cool or smart, maybe be well liked by those around us, while not actually wanting to fit in. Maybe we do it for personal gain, and we forget that God knows us even when we try to hide who we are. Now, before we look at this passage and go over our normal, God's normal, and our new normal, I thought it'd be good to show some examples of how others want to be perceived versus reality. Now, doesn't this picture look nice? Sitting and relaxing on the beach, you might even be thinking, I can't wait to go on holiday somewhere like that. It's nice and warm. Well, the reality is, is that it's a picture of Sasha's legs with a picture of a beach in front of it on a tablet. So here's another one for you. This is me getting my hair cut in Southern Africa when I went to go visit my mom for the first time. Now, I did get my hair cut in South Africa while I was there, but it was actually with some clippers and some scissors by a professional hairstylist, not by my friend here with the machete. And it took her a while to actually keep a straight face to take this photo. And I'm not saying that social media is bad or everything everyone posts is about pretending or hiding. I am wanting to show the dangers of intentionally hiding and lying for personal gain. That's when we curate our lives so we can reveal what we want others to see and perceive about us, but hide who we are and what is really going on. In the previous section, we see a story about the Apostle Barnabas selling property and giving it all to the church and the community. Then Luke gives us an almost identical story. What is so different about this story than the previous one? Why does Luke share this story without holding back? 
After all, Luke could have hid part of the story. He could have shared it and changed it to be about a couple who gave their money to the apostles and the church before they died. He could have curated it like we do with social media or the stories we want to brag or boast about to hide what really happened. That would have been more encouraging. So why does Luke highlight this story and what is, really what is he really saying without sugarcoating it? Luke is showing us who we really are. He is showing us our normal. Showing us that our normal is to hide ourselves from God. We don't want others to know the sin in our lives, so we pretend it doesn't exist. We just ignore it. I don't have sin. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm a good person and I don't have anything to hide. Secondly, our normal, we think we can lie to God. And Peter tells this to Ananias at the end of verse 4. And third, we see our normal being revealed by Sapphira again when Peter confronts her and asks her that, or tells her that she is testing the Lord. They want to hide their true selves and think that they can do this and hide from God as well as people. God's Spirit is on the move and growing the church. In Acts 4.32, it says they were all of one heart and one soul, which they are one in the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God has left the building, which is the temple, and is on the move to reveal His love, generosity, His power to those around Him. God is establishing His church and showing His people something new. In this almost utopian society created by God himself, Ananias and Sapphira conspire together to try to deceive those around them, wanting to fool others and thinking that these people are like Barnabas. They want to be seen on the same level as this great apostle indeed, but in their hearts are nowhere close. They intentionally, they intentionally do the actions but deny in their hearts. They see Barnabas do this and work together to deceive. They decide, we don't have to give it all, but tell them that we did. We don't have to really join in in order to reap the benefits, but act like we're involved. We don't have to give it our best, but say that we did. They aren't even faking it until they make it, but faking it so that they don't have to be serious about it, and they think that they can get away with it. They don't really want to be part of the church, but desire the recognition of others to think that they are. Ananias and Sapphira hold tight to the lie that they have done no wrong. They confess with their words and actions that this is what they want, but hide that they don't really want it. It's all a hollow appearance. But how often do we do this? It's easy to confess with our mouth what we know we should do, but much harder to put it into practice, let alone let it be a way of life. How often do we use the excuse of, I'm too busy, when we really couldn't be bothered because we think it is pointless or useless or really just don't want to give up what little free time we have to go? Why is it easier to try and please other around us instead of sharing the truth? This is where our normal in wanting to intentionally hide our true motives and desires to deceive those around us starts. It stems from wanting all the spirituality and comfort it comes with, but none of the accountability. We think we have no sin in our lives. The deceit needs to be confronted because we are not lying to man, but to God, as it says in verse 4. Hiding it's something that I personally can relate to. In 2011, I went to South Africa to do a six-month discipleship training school with Youth with a Mission, the organization that I'm here with now. On the first day, we were asked to share whatever we wanted about how God had brought us here to do this six-month course. I shared about my Christian upbringing and family, shared about my parents getting a divorce, the struggles I've had with drinking alcohol, and I knew that I was there needing to know God better and to let him in. However, 
I hid and left out intentionally one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to come to do this school. I wanted to be perceived as this great Christian coming to get to know God for six months of my life, but not actually share the real reason I was there. After about two weeks of being at this school, one of the leaders said, there is something you are intentionally hiding and God wants to deal with it right now. Let's go for a walk and talk. He confronted it in my life, similar to how Peter's confronting it to Ananias and Sapphira. And without holding back, he shared what I was hiding. I opened up and I shared back that I was actually involved in a marital affair. And through that sin in my life, I knew that I needed God in my life to forgive me and to walk it through. I was hiding why I was really there. And now I have a choice being confronted by not man, but by God to confess or deny. And I understand the dilemma of wanting to save face so I don't lose what I want to, to people to perceive. I can relate to Ananias and Sapphira. I am no better than them. And I think at some point we can all relate to this. We can relate to when our true motives and desires are revealed. We have all tried to hide mistakes in our lives and sins we have committed, and not just from people, but we think that God doesn't know. We tried to hide this from those in the church who genuinely care. If it is something we all do in various contexts, after all, I did it. I'm still working through other areas that God reveals to me. Then why is it okay? Well, Luke is warning us of the dangers of our normal. This is our normal, but not how God wants us to live. And we can see this in Peter's reaction and the people who are there to experience it. Peter goes to Ananias with boldness and power from the Holy Spirit to confront what is beyond what they want to be perceived as. And it is the Holy Spirit that reveals their heart, which Ananias and Sapphira wanted to pretend was pure and blameless. Peter opens up in verse 3, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back the proceeds to, for yourself? Now, if we think about Peter for a quick second, it was Peter who Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan. Hmm. Peter recognizes that anything going against God is of Satan. And even taking that a step further, that says, and reveals that using the church to promote yourself is satanic. The language here is extreme. It is shocking to think that in this category, we think that this kind of behavior is okay and tolerable because it's our normal. And as we see at the end of verse 4, it wasn't about lying to Peter or the others, but it was about lying to God. No one came to them and begged them to do this. In fact, Peter's response shows us that they could have sold it for the same amount and said, this is what we would like to give. This is what we'd like to keep for ourselves. And that would have been okay. That would have been open and honest and loving. They chose to want to look like Barnabas. And then, even when being confronted with it, still maintain the lie and the deception as to not be exposed and hide who they are. And after being confronted, Ananias fell to his feet and breathed his last. Now, the people who hear of this become fearful. And to be honest, I am probably just as afraid as the people in this passage who were there to hear it and experience it. And I don't understand this completely, but I do know that when we think we are overreacting we have something to learn about who God is. So, we have something to learn about who God is. Now, let's continue with, with Peter in this moment. It says it's been about three hours. Peter, still empowered by the Holy Spirit, now confronts Sapphira. Peter now gives her a chance to come clean, to reconcile the situation, to be open and honest about the whole entire thing. She continues with the deception and hides. Peter asks, how is it you have agreed together to test the Lord? 
Now, it isn't about debating if what they did is right or wrong, because they knew it was wrong. They had this pre-planned to see if they could get away with it, to see if they could get away with the deception. We can never get away with hiding or lying to God. And Luke wants us to realize that trying to do so is not okay. When we know something is sinful and wrong, we should run and flee from it, but run to God in those moments. And again, if anyone is going to understand God's heart for reconciliation in this story, it is Peter, who denied knowing Jesus three times and was reconciled back after the resurrection. Peter gets Ananias in confronting with Satan filling their hearts, and he understands the importance of needing forgiveness in this moment, which is why I think that God revealed what was happening to Peter because he would really understand the entire situation. Now, I do want to point out that Peter is not abusing the power or authority given to him. He is not out for money. Peter is confronting to belief, the belief that they see themselves as sinless, that there is nothing to hide and nothing wrong with what they are doing. Sin in the church needs to be exposed if we continue to deny its presence, we continue to deny, we continue to lie to God. And Luke is highlighting the importance of not abusing the power or authority and demonstrating that all those who have been leaders in the church who have abused, misused, and badly portrayed God will answer for this. That if the church has done this to you, that is not okay. And I want you to know that. We want you to know that. It is not okay with God for people to use their religious power and authority for personal gain, to lord it over others for anything. And this is one of the main reasons that people are hurt by the church. Now, I do want to be clear. This is not the reflection of who God is. Our normal of sinful, fallen nature, hiding our sin, but that also exposes our need for repentance and redemption that is only found in Jesus Christ. God is not okay with hollow appearances, and he sees it and knows what's happening and will be the judge for that. And again, this is our normal but this is not God's normal. So what is God's normal? Well, God's normal is of open, honest communication, not of hypocrisy saying one thing and doing another. God wants us to come to him to acknowledge that we have sin and not pretend that we don't and are blameless. And it isn't until we actually acknowledge it and bring it to Christ that we can have our hidden nature taken and become something new. This is the church that God is building up right here. God's normal has always been and will always be to be in fellowship with us and cannot do so if sin is present in our lives and especially when we pretend that it's not okay or that we don't have it. God's normal has never been about the buildings or the temple, but about relationship with his people with me and with you. This is the church that we see in Acts. This is one of love and generosity and people giving towards others from a pure heart, a good conscience and sincere faith. This is how we desire, that how he desires all believers and Christ Church Liverpool to be. God's normal is that of reconciliation and forgiveness and redemption always paving a way for us to come to him. He has always given his people, those who believe in him, a way back. What has changed is only how we get there, how he's provided that way. Because now it is through Jesus Christ who defeated death on the cross. We cannot hide from God. David says, he knows when I rise and when I fall. God's normal is allowing us to choose to be exposed of the sin in our lives so we will run to him 
to be reconciled back through the only way possible, his son, Jesus Christ. But Ananias and Sapphira, they didn't want God's normal. They wanted to stay in their normal. They didn't want to be reconciled back, but stay in hiding. They continue to lie to God and not let their sin be exposed to the one who already knew it was there. God's normal is for us to come to him naked and bare and vulnerable, saying, this is who I am. This is my mess. This is my junk that I need you to take. But it's not just about saying, I'm sorry, and acknowledging that you have it. It's taking it another step further and saying, I am so sorry. You are the only one to save me and to take this. So please take this and and allow him to rescue you as he is the only one who can. This is true repentance, to do a complete 180 degree turn. When sin is exposed, we need to turn to God and ask him to take it and seeking him for how to live it out. This is not a one-off experience. As I had that experience in South Africa, this is something that I am working through each and every day to come to him when things are revealed in me that need to be dealt with. I'm still learning. And this is something that we can all do ourselves is accept the love that Christ offers. God's normal is to have his people, his church, living in this way so that his spirit can flow out into the streets. This is God's normal. This is God's normal for us as a church, as a body of believers, working in one with his spirit. So if that's our normal and that's God's normal, what's our response going to be? What should be our new normal? Well, first, it's acknowledging that we have sin and, and recognizing that he is offering reconciliation through Christ. We all fall short of God's glory and perfection, but it is what we do when we become aware of it that really matters. When our sin is exposed, we can come to Christ and be transformed by the power of his Holy Spirit. This is beautiful as we see in the church here in Acts, walking this out and living it out. We are offered, we are offered this and experience the joy when we come to Jesus. How he really is the only one to reveal it. How he revealed it to me and will reveal it when we acknowledge it and wants to be the one to walk with us and journey with us. I am no better than Ananias and Sapphira, as there is still sin being revealed daily. And the struggle in wanting to bring it to God is real. It's not easy, but it could be if we let God in and let him to take it. And this, is our, this should be our new normal. To be transformed by the love and power of Christ, to turn away from our sin, wanting to run to him when it is exposed. And when we accept it, we get to show others who God is. We get to reflect him in his glory. Luke is revealing to us how much better it is when we live under the love of Christ and warning us of how we shouldn't keep sin hidden like God doesn't know. Because God values the relationship with us and wants it for each one of us. So let's take off the mask and fig leaves and be open with those around us. A chance to say, man, I couldn't really be bothered to go to Connect Group instead of I'm saying I'm too busy. And then let's discuss why that is, what's going on, and to journey with people in these conversations. Let's talk about how saying we forgive somebody but still holding a grudge and complaining about that person is not okay. And seek God for what is true forgiveness and how do we hand it over to him? Because when the church is open and honest, collaborating with the Spirit of God as we see here in Acts and after this passage, he moves mightily and incredibly. The power of God is on the move. And, but if we pretend that we don't have sin like Ananias and Sapphira, it will hinder God's movement. 
Let's be a church and a body of, of believers that gets this right. Let's be honest to one another so God can set us free out onto the streets. Through a lifestyle of living out God's normal, thousands of people get added to the church daily. And those who have give, those who don't have receive. It's beautiful. There is joy in exposing the sin we try so hard to deny that even exists. But there is joy in allowing God to come in and seeing how to live out God's normal. And when we do that, there is fruit. There is lives transformed. We are transformed. Communities are transformed. And we see God do incredible things. And I do hope and pray that Christ Church Liverpool will be a place of openness and we will see the Spirit of God arise in each one of us and in this city and see a movement like we have here in Acts. When the body of Christ lives out a heart attitude of the love of God, miracles happen as we will see in the next part. Luke is showing us that no longer do we need sacrifices or old ways. When we believe in Christ, we are new creations. We need to be willing to embrace this new normal, God's normal, of not trying to hide anything from Him, but cooperating with His Spirit. And I believe we can be this church and are called to do so. I look forward to seeing our church grow and allowing God to expose things that are hidden so that he can move mightily to transform this city and everybody who's watching. Let's be a church that gets this right. Let's not be a church that is focused on a spiritual lockdown because sin is in our lives, but let God expose that so that we can be free to go out onto the streets to share the love of Jesus that he wants for each of us and the relationship that he desires. Jesus, I come to you. I am so sorry for how I have struggled to let sin in my life be exposed. It is only by your spirit that conviction and forgiveness comes. Search me and know me. Search each person and reveal to us the sin in our lives so that we can choose to hand it over to you. I pray that as we do this, we will see you move mightily through one another. I pray that we will be in unity with what your spirit wants to do. So Lord, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for the forgiveness that he allows. And I thank you that we get to come before you and give you everything that we are for to be transformed by you. In your name I pray. Amen.